Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Kroll, and thank you for your interest in learning more about the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is one of my favorite topics to speak about, maybe because it's one of those areas that mainstream medicine just really hasn't uh, come around to accepting yet. The uh, ketogenic diet is one of the most effective ways for losing weight, but it's not just a short-term solution. You can actually live a ketogenic lifestyle over the long term to manage weight. So how does the ketogenic diet work? The basic purpose of ketogenic diet is to transition your body into a fat burning state where basically you adapt to using fat as your primary fuel source. We never get to that state because we have so many carbs in our diet. But if you lower your carb intake low enough and keep your protein intake in moderation, your body will transition over a few weeks to where it uses fat as its primary fuel. As we'll talk about momentarily, the body prefers to use fat as the primary fuel. And I'll keep coming back to the role of insulin. Basically, when we consume carbohydrates, our body has to produce insulin to bring the blood sugar down. And whenever insulin is floating around in the body to a significant extent, it does not let the body burn its fat stores. So even if you're careful about watching your calories and you're laboriously tracking everything and you're exercising, doing everything you should do, if you get too many of your calories from carbohydrates so that there's more insulin floating around, it prevents you from burning fat. It also has to do a lot with why uh, people will commonly plateau because they get to a point where the insulin is just not allowing any further um, fat, um, fat usage. So when you lower your carbohydrate intake and convert to fat burning, your insulin levels are extremely low and you basically utilize either the fat that's in your diet or the, the stored fat that you have for energy. So basically with a ketogenic diet, we're talking about consuming about 75% of your calories from fat and about 20 from protein and 5 from carbohydrate. So I'm often asked, how does this really differ from Atkins? Because it sounds a lot like it. And there's a very important distinction. The Atkins diet um, ha has commonly become known as a low-carb, high-protein diet. And many people who go low-carb um, get high-protein. And it's understandable because we've been brainwashed all these years to think that high fat is bad for us. So if you're going to lower carbs, your only other option is to get lots of protein. But the problem with protein is, and it's protein is good, but if you get too much protein, the body breaks that protein down into amino acids and converts it to glucose. So if you're trying to become ketogenic, trying to convert to using fat as your primary fuel, but too many of your calories are from protein, those amino acids will be converted to glucose and it won't really let you fully adapt to using fat as your fuel. So in general, we need to keep protein intake to about one gram per kilogram body weight. Uh, so for example, if, you, if your goal weight is 150, you know, that's roughly 60, 65 kilograms. So you're, you would limit your protein intake to 60, 65 grams a day. And we need to keep the carb intake below 20 to 30 grams a day uh, to, to stay in ketosis. So what, what about ketosis? Is staying in ketosis over the long term bad for you? And I love that question. Uh, a year ago, I would have answered it differently. Doctors, nutritionists, many people in healthcare have the misconception that ketosis is bad for you because we're all trained about diabetic ketoacidosis, which is um, a dangerous state, and you cannot stay in ketoacidosis. But it all comes down to the amount of ketones we're talking about here. When a diabetic is in ketoacidosis, a life-threatening state, the ketone levels in the blood are uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 or more. When we talk about nutritional ketosis, a healthy state, uh, the blood ketone levels are really just one to three. So this has nothing to do with diabetic ketoacidosis. Ketosis, uh, nutritional ketosis, doesn't trash your kidneys, your liver, cause you to leach your bones, all the things that I thought 
before I really looked into uh, nutritional ketosis as a, a healthy way of living. So then the next question that always comes up, and I know you're dying to know, is how can it be good for you to eat all this fat? And that's really the crux of what I want to share with you today. We are brainwashed, mostly by the pharmaceutical industry, but we've all bought into this idea for the last 20 years that heart disease is caused by saturated fat and cholesterol. And while this is very important, when the saturated fat and cholesterol is consumed in the setting of carbohydrates, the high insulin levels cause that fat to be packaged into tiny particles, which certainly contributes to plaque development in your arteries and leading to heart attack and stroke. But many studies have shown, and these are well-designed studies, by the way, done in academic settings, not the kind of studies that you can buy to show whatever result you want. The studies have shown that when you consume high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol, but in the absence of significant carbohydrates, so your insulin levels are low, ironically, the, the fat that you're eating mostly is being consumed for energy, so it doesn't matter anyway, but whatever does get packaged and metabolized is in big fluffy particles, which are actually pretty resistant to getting into your artery walls and causing plaque. So many studies in, in athletes and others who follow a ketogenic lifestyle, ironically, you could measure blood on a regular diet that's 30% fat and 40% carbs, and the amount of fatty acids and small, bad cholesterol-forming particles would be a lot higher than if you went on a ketogenic diet for six weeks or three months and did the blood again. The cholesterol levels might be a little higher, but... Cholesterol is just a number. What matters, and we know what matters, is the size of those particles. So you're much better off, and you're more healthy from a standpoint of cardiovascular disease risk if you're getting 75% of your calories from fat, but only 5% from carbs because of what we've just talked about with particle size being the most important thing. And the real irony or paradox of all this is if you're following a ketogenic lifestyle so that your carbs are low and you're using your fats as energy, the very fats that you want to take in are the fats, fats which we've been programmed to think are bad for us. Saturated fats are the best, most efficient energy sources because the body doesn't have to break them down. There's not all these double bonds um, in there that... that cause it to be less efficient as a fuel source. So fully saturated fats like coconut oil, butter, red meat, you know, the actual fat on the beef, those are ideal as energy sources. So when you're following a ketogenic lifestyle, those are the kind of fats that you, you actually want to consume. And they're not bad for you for all the reasons that we've just talked about. So once you've thought about all this and decided, wow, that really does sound good and I'm, I'm going to do a ketogenic lifestyle, how do you get started? Well, basically, you, you do need to monitor your calorie intake so, so that you know that you're not getting too many carbs and you know that you're not getting more than one gram per kilogram body weight of your protein. But as long as you keep your carbs below 20 to 30, uh, after about four days, you're going you're gonna to burn up all the stored glucose you have in your body, stored as glycogen, and then your body starts on the path towards utilizing fat as its fuel. So imagine, and you might have heard this, you do go through a significant adjustment after four or five days where you start to feel bad because the, the body doesn't have the glucose and it hasn't yet adapted to using fat. So it wants to burn glucose in the brain. It's not there, so there's a lightheadedness, a fogginess but that goes away pretty quickly. And you adapt a lot more quickly with a ketogenic um, diet than with Atkins when you're getting too much protein because the high protein doesn't let you transition to fat burning as quickly. And so you don't have the glucose around, but you're also not adapting to using fat. So you, you basically don't have your primary fuel source at all and you feel bad for a longer period of time. So it's also very important to track your ketone levels as you get started. And we do this simply by checking urine strips. 
So uh, after four or five days, uh, if you use a urine ketone strip, it'll turn bright pink or purple, indicating that you are releasing ketones into the bloodstream. And I also like to emphasize that for the first month or two, you can use those urine strips, but realize after two months or so, all those ketones that are released in the, into the bloodstream are now being burned up for energy. So there really is not an excess to spill over into the urine. So after a couple of months, your urine strips will be negative, but you are in ketosis. So you really need to use blood ketone strips after a couple months to make sure that you're staying in ketosis. Because remember, it is important. I've told you that this is healthy for you to live this way, but that assumes that you're not getting hidden sources of carbs or too much protein and going out of ketosis. So it does require some monitoring just to make sure that you're staying in the healthy state of nutritional ketosis. So what if you are doing everything you're supposed to do and you're not going into ketosis? The most common reason for that is that you're getting too many carbs, hidden carbs, and that's why you need to be monitoring the carbs. Uh, and so as you check a urine ketone level and you're not in ketosis anymore, you can look back and see, well, where did the carbs come from? But sometimes you are so careful with the carbs that you know you didn't get too many carbs and that's why the point about protein is a very important take home point because too much protein would be the second most common reason why you may not be getting or staying in ketosis. So you keep it at literally one gram per kilogram of body weight. When you follow those two things and track your intake, generally you will get into ketosis. So what are the benefits of this healthy state of nutritional ketosis other than helping you manage your weight? Well, most people who live this way say that they've never had this much energy. Their primary fuel is always available. They don't get the highs and lows in energy level due to highs and lows in blood sugar intake. And they just feel good most of the time. No emotional highs and lows. And it's interesting when you're on a ketogenic diet, you do experience hunger, but it's kind of Kind of like, okay, I'm hungry, but I'll get to it when it's convenient. You don't have a sense of I've got to eat now because your body does have its fuel source available if it, if it needs it. But there are more and more diseases which we're finding respond to a ketogenic lifestyle, mainly neurologic diseases, because as it turns out, our nervous system prefers to use fat as a fuel. So our nervous system functions better when we are living ketogenically. So Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, MS, uh, and seizure disorders are conditions, part of which the treatment can be a ketogenic diet. But one of the most exciting new areas of research uh, right here in my backyard at the University of South Florida is being done on cancer. And it turns out that cancer cells can't really adapt to using fat as a fuel. So they're looking at um, hyperbaric oxygen environments with a ketogenic diet as a way of literally starving out cancer cells. Uh, very exciting. Uh, so it turns out that the ketogenic lifestyle, the ketogenic diet is a healthy way of managing your weight. It's a healthy way of living a heart healthy lifestyle paradoxically. And uh, if you really are interested in learning more about the benefits, how to do it, I would encourage you to uh, check, um, check the following resources. Um, there's one in particular that I think is well done, and that is a book called Conquering Diabetes with a Ketogenic Diet by Ellen Davis. It explains a lot of the things that you can do if you're not feeling well in those first few weeks, and specifically what you can eat. And feel free, if you have more uh, questions, you can Email me at drcrawl at mydpcdoc.com. Uh, you can get that through my website at uh, www.mydpcdoc.com. So thank you again for your attention and your interest in this amazing topic. And as you try to look, move forward and follow a heart healthy lifestyle and aim for uh, good health and healthy longevity, please always remember that not enough time is a euphemism for not enough desire. Thank you.